Hey everybody, tonight we're debating Flat Earth versus Globe Earth and we're starting right now. With the Globe side team, thanks so much for being with us. Snake was right and word of the wild, the floor is all yours. Go ahead, Snake, you first. All right. Uh, so uh, I run a channel that's basically, uh, it's called Snake Was Right and it focuses on uh, skepticism, uh, debunking stuff and uh, mostly just critical thinking skills and source methods. So epistemology, how you know things. Uh, I cover whatever topic I feel like in the day, but uh, tends to be more religiously oriented topics. And uh, yeah. We, we you just doing introductions here? Actually, your opening statement. So this would be your oh, chance okay. to. You got your twelve minutes split between the two of you. Okay. Let me. Okay. So uh, yeah, today we're going to be debating the flat Earth, and basically, from my understanding, uh, flat Earthers kind of uh, arrive at their conclusion based on they don't understand how things like how how do how do water and Australians just how do they not just fall off the quote bottom of the sphere um, and how a globe can spin and fly through space at high speeds without throwing us off, how air doesn't escape the vicinity of the globe and combined with uh, not understanding like basic forces, they're, uh, they don't understand the globe model. So they, and then flat earth just makes more sense to them. Um, their intuition just tells them things just move down and uh, I guess I'll give it to them. The real physics is not intuitive. So, uh, but this doesn't change the facts that gravity will always form balls of masses the size of the earth and air pressure is possible without containers, things like that. Um, and because of the Dunning-Kruger effect, misunderstandings of facts are more likely to induce extreme confidence in the mistakes. And uh, thus flat earth also brings a sense of pride and superiority, but uh, it has this crippling reliance on a vast global conspiracy to cover up the true shape of the earth because of all the scientific uh, consensus towards the otherwise. Um, uh, I don't understand this conspiracy theory. Uh, there's no gain from covering up the shape of the earth, nor is there a means to do so, um, even though it's completely relied on it. So, um, so the amount of coastline that would be need to patrol and stop exploration is greater than all the continents on the earth except for Antarctica. Um, and that's an impossible task to co and just physically and to cooperate with all the nations who can't agree on anything anyway. Um, our government can't cover up basic material facts. Uh, politicians have stuff leaked about them all the time that are much more personally damaging, but somehow they've covered up the shape of the earth for hundreds of years with no leaks. Um, with but no comparable security on their own personal information. Uh, the, the closest flat earthers have to like admissions of this are just quote mines from people like NASA. I'm sure everyone's heard that NASA says everything has to be composited. Well, that's not true. Um, first of all, the composites aren't fake pictures. That's kind of how your panoramic camera on your phone works. It just puts multiple camera, multiple uh, images together in one. Uh, and second of all, there are full Earth pictures, and uh, the only compositing that needs to be done on those sometimes is just color correction. The shapes and features are all unedited. Uh, and then we have uh, live feeds from multiple satellites all around the Earth, and you can't fake those because they're uh, constantly updating the weather patterns. So you could uh, easily debunk them at any time by going to some random place on the globe and comparing the weather patterns. And it's it's not possible to fake because you would have to have literally hundreds of thousands of data points photoshopped every five or 10 minutes for multiple different satellites. So again, you have to rely on a ridiculous conspiracy theory to explain that away. Um, there's also no flat earth model. Um, all they have is undercutting arguments against the globe earth they have no rebutting arguments or positive evidence of the flat earth or flat earth model. Um, and I'm gonna go through a couple of just uh, basic everyday proofs of the globe earth, 
Uh, flat earther Jaronism proved the curve with his famous experiment where the outcome he said would prove the globe earth occurred in his experiment. Uh, and the other flat earthers have measured the rotation of the earth with laser gyroscopes. Uh, Cavendish experiment proves gravity is an attractive mass. Anyone can do this in a, over a weekend. Uh, the way stars spin, the way stars are visible only on certain parts of the globe and the way they spin is only possible on a spinning globe. It's not possible on a flat plane. Lunar eclipses show the shadow of the Earth. The ISS has uncut footage of weightlessness longer than weightlessness can be faked on Earth. Lake Pontchartrain has a bridge that's built to be curved over curving water, and it's visible. And both that lake and other salt flats show curvature. Um, and time zones. Time zones themselves prove that the Earth is not flat because you can't have a uh, square or a rectangular projection of light from a, 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 a spherical light source. Um, you would have to have a lampshade over the sun. And um, so it's not possible to have a flat earth model because one, they don't really know how, and two, it's just a game of whack-a-mole. So if you adjust the parameters to explain the shape of the earth, you end up distorting the parameters of individual continents. Like Australia becomes the width of Eurasia and the coastline of Antarctica becomes the entire rim of the Earth, which is, again, longer than all the coastlines combined. And uh, flights that take the same time at the same speed in the same direction all of a sudden are going twice as far as in the Southern Hemisphere, in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, the sun would have to move up and down in latitude for some unknown unpredictable reason and change speed and route for a different unknown unpredictable reason to spin around either pole, um, and being in the atmosphere, you could go visit the sun, but of course, no flat earther with a pilot's license will bother. Uh, not to mention the moon, same thing, but it needs a completely different mechanism to explain its completely different procession through the sky. And we can visit it, but no one will bother. And that's still not addressing the fact that the sun and moon physically disappear below the horizon, and, which is not possible on a flat earth. Uh, there's hypothetical electromagnetic explanation of gravity that pulls all objects including lighter than air objects. Um, and this contradicts the electromagnetic anti-gravity that holds up the stars and the sun and the moon that somehow doesn't pull or repel other objects. And it's electromagnetic. It would destroy computers as it somehow moved under the ground uh, at hundreds of miles per hour. Um, so flat earth creates 10 more problems with every so-called solution. You can't put all of the things that they claim in the same model because they contradict each other. Um, the globe model substantiates all of this with just one model and one explanation, and nothing suddenly changes patterns for no reasons. It's all predictable and explained with gravity. There's no globe takes fewer assertions and no assumptions. So Occam's razor points towards the globe. Um, we have all the scientists, all the math in the world, videos, photographs uh, of every angle. People who went to space, video of that, video from space to space and in space on the ground and in space. And we have models which account for everything and the flat earthers remain skeptical, but if you need to patch up a hole on the flat earth attempt at a model, they just use conjecture to come up with things like electromagnetic wakes as the cause of hurricanes. And every flat earther instantly accepts it, hook, line, and seeker, without so much as a single demonstration or experiment or even a mechanistic model, even a theoretical one or a hypothetical one. Uh, so it's a double standard or selective skepticism, if you will. And uh, despite all this direct evidence that you could do in your own backyard, uh, I'm going to start this debate by completely throwing out my belief in the globe. And I want to try and collaboratively build a case for what we know about the Earth from the ground up using only fundamental premises that we can all agree upon. And then if we can even do that, we'll see how many of my claims hold up to that. So thank you. You got it. And word of the wild... You do have a bit of time left if you had anything to add. You got about four minutes. Four minutes. Uh, okay, well, my name's Jonathan Finley. I was a pastor at a Calvary Chapel for almost a decade. I'm a father of three. Married to my amazing wife for almost 13 years. I'm a hobbyist homesteader. Me and Nathan doing some farm work today. Not together, but separately. i am uh, been a Gandendorf, Maine since Melee. And the boring stuff, I work as an electrician every day. But uh, for this debate, he, here's my opening thing here. I, I wanted to to offer an alternative conspiracy theory. So 
I, I want to admit and agree with my opponents that NASA and the government and most, if not all of our civic overlords don't have our best interest in mind. Many, if not all of them are deceitful, corrupt, full of lies. And I agree with most of my flat earth friends that the world we live in is a hostile and scary place. Thanks to the tyrants who lord over us, but it's also a wonderful and awe striking world in spite of them. And I want to have solidarity with my globe skeptic brothers and that we are subject to the hegemonic ruling class and we can't always trust what comes down from above in the media or otherwise. Our world is run on greed, death dealing, revenge, lies, and avarice. But where we're going to disagree is the nature of these deceptions. And NASA is run by just regular people like you and me home, you know, just regular people. They're just more educated versions of us. They have hobbies, families, sicknesses, they poop, they cry, they make mistakes. They're humans. They're our brothers and sisters. Even the NASA, Higginami, they too are people, I guess. But we know what happens when money gets involved. Rapacity has no bounds. When I was a pastor, I would find myself, like as I'd get more, you know, prestige and access to money, find myself well saying like, well, that's kind of a church, you know, thing. And then I just buy myself some music gadget or something. And that was just the beginning of a long, what could have been a long string of corruption. And NASA is not, they're no exception to this. They're corrupt just like any other for-profit business. They deal in making money. And the best way to make money is to make good products that work and convince the world that they need your products. So um, let's see. I'm convinced that the only conspiracy going on at NASA or the White House or whatever is a conspiracy of consumption. They have convinced us that they are for our future, they're for the humanity of future, uh, all of humanity's future, and that our future's in the stars and they can take us there. But I'm not convinced of this at all. I believe that God, the earth, whatever, brought us into existence and put us on this planet and our fate is linked with it. NASA wants to convince us that the way forward is investing more money in technology without a thought to the environment and the poor people and other creatures that suffer from the extraction of resources and the ravaging of land and cultures and the weight of its progress. But humans are very good at making things that work and making money and thwarting nature at every turn. Um, I have about 30 seconds left, and I'll just say, I don't think that, I, I think that if you just understand that there's no limit to the human ingenuity, but also it's avarice. So I want to agree with you that NASA probably is corrupt and they probably lie to us, but not in the way that we think. I think it's it's a whole nother ball game. And my challenge is that uh, we all trust to the science at some point. We all trust different sciences, but where's the line? Where's the line? And all stop there you got it thank you very much gentlemen and want to let you know folks if it's your first time here at modern day debate we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science religion and politics and we hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from we're thrilled to have you here and hey my dear friends we are absolutely excited at the bottom right of your screen that's right a week from today t jump will be in a brand new debate as it's been almost a month since we've had tom Good old Flat Earth debate, so do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, as we have many more juicy debates coming up. And so with that, we're going to kick it over to our Flat Earth friends. Thanks so much. Nathan and Davey, the floor is all yours for your opening. All right, so you guys, uh, Flat Earth is not a belief. Um, a belief is something that you just accept without having information. To know something is that you have information. One um, okay, so first of all, Taylor is saying that we don't have a model. Um, I have a link right here to NASA's website saying a model frequently used is that of a flat and non-rotating Earth. So you're wrong there. That one's out. Um, and then um, the next thing is that we don't live on a model. So what, what these ballers, they want to do is they want to reify a model into existence. I'm not standing on a model. I'm standing in the real and physical world. 
I can see, this is the number one globe to bunk. I can see a sunset at a six foot height uh, from one Hawaiian island to another. And if the earth were a ball with a 39, 59 mile radius, <laughs> this is like too funny. You would see obstruction because the, the sun is supposedly the center of the, of the solar system. So here's the sun, here's the earth. Supposedly they're spinning backwards, right? So when I stand with a six foot observer height on the, on the ocean and I could see the sunset past Kauai, which you could see the island, and it's 108 miles away, the sun obstruction should actually be at three miles. Here's the map. Anybody can get their iPhones and do this. It's 1.23 miles times the square foot, the square root of six. That's going to give you the top of the ball. The top of the ball is what's supposed to be causing obstruction. But in reality, not in a model, we already won with sunsets. It's a done deal. The sun isn't being obstructed at 108 miles where I could see Kauai from the tip of Oahu. It's, it's hiding behind the horizon way further. Globe debunked. Do I even have to bring up the fact that Globe versus Flat went to court in the state of Georgia in 2019? And guess who won? Flat Earth won by a landslide. Not once, twice. The reason is, is the baller could not provide actual evidence of curvature. The one I just debunked, that's why we won in court. So as far as this being a debate, the debate's over. NASA uses flat earth models. You can see a 9,000 kilometer squared area in the Bolivian salt flats. And guess what? It's all flat by an Oxford scientist. He went and he measured it. And from east to west, a hundred mile distance, sorry, a hundred kilometers, there's under one meter of vertical drop. If the earth were a ball, okay, and, and no, your, your model was, you know, the, the thing, there would be about 781 meters of vertical drop, but there isn't. There's only about three feet. Globe debunked right there again. Flights, we've interviewed pilots and they all say that their altitude meter tells them that they're going straight. Why are they going straight? Well, go ahead and read any pilot's manual or any NASA manual talking about oscillations and flights. They all have to assume that the Earth is flat. Why? Because if the airplane at 35,000 feet in altitude is going at a cruising speed of 500 miles an hour, you should be dipping down 2,700 feet per minute. When I'm on a plane, I know I'm going straight. Okay? When I'm going down, I could feel it. When I'm going to the side, I, you can feel that in your body. Everybody would feel it, but we don't. Why? Because planes, they fly slightly with their nose up, but they go straight over a flat bed of water. I do it all the time from the mainland to Hawaii. It's all flat. Every pilot that I've asked, I go, do you guys dip down? No. Well, you should have to since you're going over a ball. And they're like, huh, that's weird. Yep. They're out. That's globe to bunk right there with flights. Um, Another one is um, all laws of physics state that you can't have gas pressure without a container. Gas molecules go up as well. That's why we have carbon cycles. Well, guess what? Those gas molecules require a container to bounce off of. They can't get out of this one. I've heard everything from hydrostatic equilibrium to gravity, which is nothing. By the way, there's two gravities. And if these guys don't know the two gravities, <laughs> this is gonna be easy for Nathan and I. Nathan and I know your guys' models. We know all the gravities better than you guys do. We can actually do math, do actual measurements, but you guys don't do any of that. Okay, so basically gravity is the, the new gravity because it got debunked. Uh, what's his name's uh, Newton's gravity got debunked by Einstein, he, he superseded it. With the bending of space-time, if anybody goes to a dictionary and they look up space-time, this is what it means. A concept, a four-way math model. You know what a concept is? You know what a math model is? Nothing. It's just some equations written on a board and say, all right, this is gravity. This is the new why. Gravity is nothing. Space-time is an idea. You can't bend an idea and cause all this stuff to just 
well, it's just gravity. Oh, well, the new one is uh, the universe is the container, which is so, <laughs> listen, they call it the vacuum of space, but then they're saying it's a, it's a container. Vacuums are not containers. They're an available volume for our gas to fill. But guess why we have cycles and gas molecules actually go up debunking gravity, gravity debunk. Um, they have to come back down because they're bouncing off of a container. The sky is not a vacuum, people. Outer space is a big fairy tale. You can never measure curvature in reality, which is why the Glober uh, lost in court. You can look it up. It's Thompson versus Zen Garcia, state of Georgia. He couldn't provide curvature. This guy's talking about we have photos from space. The only volume you have, the only space is from here to the gas pressure container. Anything claimed to be taken from outer space is 100% fake. Sunsets debunk the globe. I'm done. Oh, Nathan, you're on mute. I'll just get right into it. Thanks, James, for having me. Uh, my opponents and my teammate, thanks for being here. Everyone in the chat, go ahead and share this with anyone you know that has eyes to see and ears to hear because the truth will be so prevalent in this debate, it's going to smack these guys right in the face. They're going to be stuttering, bumbling by the end of this. So um, I used to run a YouTube. That got deleted because obviously sharing flat earth with people in the streets isn't allowed on YouTube. I used to run a Facebook group with 150,000 people. We didn't allow cursing and we didn't allow insults. No one was allowed to post anything not related to the shape of the earth and where we live. That got deleted too because you can't run groups talking about the shape of the earth that don't allow cursing and don't allow insults. I guess this is not allowed on Facebook. So um, I have an Instagram, the globe is fat. The globe is flat. My email is flatearthflyers at gmail.com. To everyone in the chat hating on me, God, don't even pay attention to those guys. They've been following me for four or five years now. They are so boring. Blessed are you when men curse you and revile you and speak all kind of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice for great is your reward in heaven. That's what I'm here to, do, here to do today is store some treasure. In heaven, Davey asked me to be his partner for the debate. Thanks, Davey. Appreciate it. So I'll try not to let you down. Also, dogs don't bark at parked cars. And if you spend your Friday night looking at me, me talk again? If you've been doing this for years, how pathetic are you? All right, let's get into the flat earth. Truth is incontrovertible. Malice will attack it. Ignorance will try and deride it. But in the end, there it is. So an honest man, when proven to be wrong, must either admit he is wrong or he no longer remains to be an honest man. And I've debated NASA employees. I've debated land surveyors, PhD astrophysicists, Mick West in the flesh, live in Vegas, Metabunk. He couldn't prove Earth curve. And he went against what Neil deGrasse Tyson said. He said you could see it from 40,000 feet. Well, Neil deGrasse Tyson, 6 million followers on Twitter, the most famous PhD astrophysicist in the world, says you can't see the curve of the Earth from 120,000 feet, which is three times that height, Metabunk. So, uh, sorry, guys, that... I don't even know why you guys are here debating. You have like no qualifications. You didn't test Earth. I'm going to get into what you talked about. But first, let's do some contradictions with the globe model. First of all, we see way too far. There is no curve. Fluid statics state that when a body of water is at rest, the surface is level and horizontal to its container. So level and horizontal, flat, smooth, flush. I mean, those are all synonyms. But sea level means sea flat ladies and gentlemen. Also, the Chicago skyline, uh, they said you're seeing a mirage when it has no properties of a mirage. You could just see the skyline. And I've done that. I did that test, my observation. You could see it. We also rented a helicopter. You could see the entire Chicago skyline from Kenosha, Illinois, which was approximately 55 miles away. Barde Prenz is the world record photograph. These people aren't even trying to debunk the globe. They're just trying to take really, really far pictures with their camera and they're competing with each other. They don't even know they're debunking the globe. 270 miles, this guy saw it. And I've heard Glover say, well, you can't see it every day. What, is the earth changing size? And sometimes it's curved and sometimes it's really flat. I mean, what are you guys talking about? Then you've got the black swan, which falsifies the radius value for the earth, which is tied to earth spin. It's tied to gravity. It's tied to everything. So we falsified everything on the globe model with the black swan. 
Neil deGrasse Tyson, like I said, admits it's flat from 120,000 feet. So no civilian has ever seen the curve of the earth because none of you guys are going above 120,000 feet. That was the Red Bull space jump. He went to space and couldn't see the curve of the earth. Astronauts say the earth is flat from low earth orbit. You don't see a globe. Holy moly. Astroarchaeology. They've been building giant megalithic structures and lining them up with the sky map, the sky clock, for thousands of years. The pyramids, Stonehenge, the Georgia Guidestones. I was just there. I did an observation. All the stars rotated around one hole. That doesn't work on your spinning monkey ball blasting through an infinite universe at 1.5 million miles an hour. That's ridiculous. Also, you have lunar eclipses. The shadow changes directions. Well, also shadows are which would mean Earth would have to change direction, which is why I mentioned that. Sometimes Globers can't put two and two together. you got to really lay things out for them. Also, shadows are black, not glowing red. A lunar eclipse is glowing red. And if you say refraction, if you say that's caused by the atmosphere, you ain't predicting eclipses because you don't know what the weather's going to be like in three months, dude. You don't know what it's going to be like in three years. You don't know what it's going to be like in three days. So don't give me that. Okay, NASA admits they use a Soros cycle to predict eclipses. That's a flat Earth cycle. The sky is a map and a clock. It's repeatable. That's why we have constellations. That's why we have Polaris. That's why we have star trails. So you can't ask me anything, including the word Polaris. You can't ask me anything, including the word eclipses. You can't ask me anything, including the word star trails. You can't ask me anything about the sky because we're here to talk about the floor and how it doesn't curve, which I already talked about. Also, um, now government documents, like my friend mentioned here, NASA uses a flat, non-rotating Earth. The FAA uses a flat, non-rotating Earth. When they're training pilots on the target generation facility, the Air Force, the Army, all have documents saying, we are assuming a flat, non-rotating Earth. Hello? And then NASA bloopers? I mean, homie said they're there to make money, and they produce a good product. Uh, sorry, bro. No, they don't. Good, well, There's harnesses, left. green screens. Oh, I didn't even get into anything Snake said. I was just... Ugh, man. All right, no worries. We can do that in the back and forth. I got it all written down. But yeah, there's no proof Earth's a globe. I wish it was. I don't want to be a flat earther. To be honest, it comes with a lot of ostracism and ridicule that I don't need in my life. But I'll stand up for it because it's the truth. Truth is incontrovertible. Stand up for the truth. Share the video if you guys are enjoying it so far. It's going to get better. Love you guys. Go ahead, James. Thank you very much for that opening as well. And want to let you know as well, folks, exciting stuff as we are very excited is Islam true? That is coming up in just a couple of weeks. Apostate Prophet will be taking on Dr. I think I'm pronouncing it right, Majid. It's going to be absolutely epic. We're pumped about that one. With that, we're going to jump into open conversation. And so thank you all, gentlemen. Also want to mention, folks, all of these guests are linked in the description right now. If you want to check out their links, we encourage it as we really do appreciate our guests. The floor is all yours, guys. So, do you not Snake, understand you what, what why models are used in science? Snake, I want to go over all your globe proofs. Uh, I asked a question. No one lives on a model. Oh, okay. Who cares? Well, I didn't know you had the floor. Yeah, so that's why I asked the question. The that's why I asked the question. Do you not understand why we use them? You're a scientist. Oh, okay. Well, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. You're a scientist. Yeah. Okay. Give me the the two. I'm a cell biologist. Okay. So okay. So, then, so are you uh, going to answer the question? We don't live on a model. Do you understand Nathan, why we use Nathan, models? Do you science? live on that globe right there that you have in your house? Do you live on it? No, we don't. Models are concepts. They're abstract. Exactly. They're not real. These don't people aren't here to talk about what's real. Not what they I asked. Gaslight, and they, they say they don't understand it, dude. I was a glober for thirty years. I thought Earth was a globe for thirty years. So if you're hey, by the way, guys, these guys his don't whole opening and anything about the globe. Not what I asked. The opening is you don't understand. Can you answer the question? That's an ad hominem attack and a logical fallacy. You know what logical fallacies are according to Purdue University? They do that to attack the person because they lack evidence. That's what it means. I didn't attack you. Can you answer the question? You did. You don't understand. Given that there's a tug of war. Hold on, gentlemen. Given that there's a tug of war going on, I do want to give Word of the Wild a chance to reset us. So Word of the Wild, any argument that you want to touch on, we'll let you redirect it since there's kind of a tug of war so far in terms of those who have already engaged. Go ahead, Word of the Wild. Let, let me ask uh, Waters Level something since he's got to go here pretty soon. Um, you, I, I notice, I don't understand why uh, people who are globe skeptics, they will try to use measurements 
to disprove the globe? Like, wh why don't why don't why don't you just throw out all measurements? Like, how come you'll accept some measurements and some methods of gaining measurements and then dismiss others? I just gave you a sunset that's supposed to be obstructed at three miles in front of me. Why is it not being obstructed until? 100 or 200 miles. I know. I'm saying I don't. Got an answer. I say I don't know how the science works, and you don't either. Yes, I do. What are you well, talking about? I don't either. I just you, gave you an actual measurement, and you're saying you don't understand science. This is a you use models selectively when it works for you. I don't. Do you know why? Do you know why models, models are used? We don't live on a model. That's a reification. That's not my question. I didn't ask Never you if we live on a model. Policy. I didn't I ask you if we lived on a I live in reality. Here in reality, on this physical earth, I can prove that it's not a globe. You Good thing I didn't them. ask that. I asked you why we use them. All right. I don't need okay. to use a model to prove that the earth... I don't even have to prove not that my the earth is flat. Maybe. Not my question. It's a reversal fallacy. I don't need to prove that the earth is flat. The earth is freaking flat. Look at it. Right there. You should see vertical drop, but you don't. That's the so ocean, you, right? So you can't answer the question. No, I don't live on a model. I don't debate models. I debate reality. Measurements. You just science, you just you know, are to you just evidence. criticized a model. Models are not Taylor. reality. Let me say this to everybody once again, because this guy does not understand. His brain is not processing this information. Models are a reification fallacy. You're not gonna take me to your little model so that I can experience it. That's why models are nothing. I yeah, can so make, you don't understand why we use models. I can make a penis earth model, and I could do all the rotations that I want, and I could say, look, everything matches exactly like it would if the earth was a penis. You can do so anything you don't, with models. So you don't understand why we would uh, say you represent. You don't, under, you don't understand. That's not ad hominem. We don't. You, you're refusing to let cares. me speak or let me ask a question. You're refusing to answer the question. Um, so you don't understand why we would say model um, in 3D a protein structure to understand how it's working, right? That's the red herring fallacy because you're moving away from the topic at hand. That's another logic. No, topic. the topic is models, why we use models in science. So you don't understand that. We don't live on a model, so you can scrap your model. We can scrap yeah, the models, flat model. All model, you have to do is use reality. Yeah, yeah so you don't understand that models, models so mo they uh, represent reality. Maybe. Yeah, but they're not reality, you know, right? You know you can calculate and predict things with models, right? Well, why did why didn't you, your model line up? Why can't you answer my question? Why? Your model why can't you work. answer my question? Your model doesn't work. Why can't you answer my question? The sunset does not happen three miles in front of me. There's no. Why can't you answer the question? Your model is debunked right there. You're just no because the sun isn't you know, the sun is not at the level of the horizon, so you don't even understand the model. Sorry, Nathan has something to you say. You don't live on a model. Who cares about your model? You don't. So live you on a use model, it selectively. Yeah. You don't, you don't live on a model. Do you live on a model? We can model what we live on. That's oh, the point God. of them. Answer me this. Do you live on a globe model? No, but we can model cares? a globe. We're trying to prove the earth. So you Not don't understand. Model. So you don't understand why scientists use models. Okay. If this Go ahead, wants Nathan. to talk about models, he's not talking about a globe or a flat earth. He's talking about something that somebody made and said, this is where you live. He believes that he lives on a model. He's trying because to say that a reification fallacy is not a reification fallacy. No, because models predict things in the real world. No, models don't predict. People predict. With models. You know what? A, you guys know what a reification fallacy is? Let me just read it here from their alma mater, Wikipedia. It's... So you don't understand why models are used in reality. Can we move on? You don't live on a model, so science. your globe is debunked. Yeah, but we use models, so you don't understand why. We're talking about the floor, bro. The Scientists energy. use models. Reality. You don't even understand that basic premise of science. You don't understand. That's because you lack right. evidence. You just got, you're done, dude. Get out of here with your little model argument. It's nothing. It's nothing. We're talking about the earth. The floor that you stand you know, on. We're talking about the scientific method. Oh, the scientific method. Okay, go ahead. Give it to me. Give me your scientific method for your model. Scientific method is using hypotheses oh, or give models. Give me your scientific method for your model. Go ahead. Let's do this. The scientific method for the globe model? You're saying it's science. You're saying a model is science. Go ahead and give me the science. Models are part of science. 
Okay, yes. so go ahead. So and I started off asking you why we use models and we use models. Who cares? Because they make predictions of reality. People predict. And they help models us. Models don't do anything. Models we, don't do anything. Models are tools that models people use talk. to predict. Models I don't know why speak. this is so weird for you. Yeah, because you, so you use a model so when and you saying, want no, to. Earth is debunked. It, globe Earth is debunked using reality. So you have to have that model. You don't right, so you're model. Use, you understand when it's convenient how to use a model. Go ahead, but maybe. not Let's not when the way. model that. Let me let me ask Waters right. level. Let me ask let me ask Waters level something. So like if I if I'm in my car and I feel like everything's working in the car. The car, the engine should turn over and it doesn't. Does that mean the car is broken or maybe I just don't understand how cars work? It's called work? flat versus globe. We're not talking about cars. We're not talking about cells. We're not but talking I'm, about We're talking anything. about concept, conceiving things and how we understand things. Because I'm saying it could be that you're seeing the sun. It looks too high. It possibly could, could it possibly be that you and I just don't understand how these things really work? Oh, I understand. If you have a globe, with a 3959 mile radius, like your model says, the sun should be obstructed only three miles in front of me, but it doesn't happen in reality. In your model, sure, models can do whatever you want. In reality, sunsets debunk, debunk the globe. I just told you how to do it. Anybody can do it, anybody can get a calculator and That's see- That's a straw man fallacy. What's That's not man? the globe model. 3959 mile radius is not the globe model? Yeah, the sun's not on the horizon. So, well, no. The sun is the center of your solar I mean, system. Only right if the sun that, was maybe. on the horizon right would your that. would your straw man work. He's actually right about that, Davey, but you can see an island 100 miles away, Taylor. You forgot that part of the observation. Mm -hmm. they island go, islands the go above the horizon. Did you know that? Yeah, but it should be obstructed yeah. by downward drop because if you live on a ball the earth would drop vertically in all directions tangent to your feet you know that right uh i don't know what you just said <laughs> the earth if we I live didn't on catch a that. ball would... all right i'll try saying it again could you not interrupt me this time i didn't if you live on a ball 39 59 mile radius the earth would drop down in all directions, kind of like this one does, in all directions, model. tangent to your feet, okay? So what he's saying is that you can see an island 100 miles away on the horizon when the horizon should be three miles out. Now you have other problems like oil platforms that are nine miles out and the horizon, the water level is behind those. When, the, when it's one foot observer height. So we falsified the globe model. Now, do you understand that falsification is independent of replacement? Mm -hmm. so, but you haven't okay, falsified so the model because you're using a straw man of the model. Because you're acting like everything is at horizon height. No, the horizon yeah. is at horizon height. I said the horizon was past the oil platforms. The horizon was not one mile out, it's past oil platforms that are nine miles out. So the horizon's so the horizon, not one mile out. Is the horizon the geometric edge of the earth or no? It's the geometric edge of your field of view. Is it the edge of the ball where it curves down mm -hmm. or no? Okay, well, we fall from your point that. of view. So we you falsified that because according to the math, pay attention. The Earth should curve in all directions, and the horizon would be 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. Davey covered that in the intro. I don't know if you were, should have been taking notes or something, but we already went over this, Snake. Your model's been debunked. It hasn't, because you're making a straw man in the model. Like, you're, no, assuming every, you're assuming all the variables are at the same height. Hold on. I'm going to show your math is areas. not a straw man, bro. Hold on. That's let me, your let me just explain to everybody how a sunset debunks the globe. Hold on. If this is the Earth and you're spinning backwards and my head is the sun, that curve, that obstruction of three miles, that's where the sun should be obstructed. But guess what? It happens way further than that. The sun is supposed to be the center of your solar system, right? Aren't you going like this? Spinning backwards at a thousand miles per hour, right? That, it, we don't see that in nature. We don't see that in reality. 
flow debunked using sunsets. I don't know how yeah. much more I have to comment. This is the problem with straw men. What do you mean? I'm using your radius. I'm using your math. I'm, I'm literally quoting. Let me get this for you. This guy doesn't understand what he's talking about. A straw man. This is your freaking okay. model. Why You're you using it up, incorrectly. Baby? All right. While you look that oh, up, maybe. God. Hold on. Like, how, how am I using it incorrectly? Go ahead. Because you're assuming everything at the same elevation. What? He's sun. right, baby. I already told you he's right right now. Okay? An airplane past three miles shouldn't be obstructed at six feet. Okay? Because it's above the ground. You'd have to make an observation at sea level. A good one is the black swan because it is observing the horizon. You're using the horizon to debunk the horizon. Now, could you say how that's a straw man, Snake? That's totally fine with me. Okay, great. Well, we falsified your model. Is falsification independent of replacement? How did you falsify the model? Oh, my All right. I'll gosh. Go because you just agreed with me. Retard. You just agreed with me. I got to go soon. I'll this go guy. over we're not gonna do the name calling, time for you. But we'll we, we're not going to do the name calling, just to be clear. And the other thing is, word of the wild, just in case you had anything to mention, we just want to be sure that you have a, a chance to jump in here. Is this? I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm enjoying this greatly. I, uh, uh, I, I don't – I mean – I don't like the talks about models and math and things because I feel like none of us really understand that very well. But I think what we all understand is that we are just people that are kind of subject to the scientific method and are, are and we kind of just say, well, the experts know what they're talking about and we trust them that they know what they're doing. I mean, what's wrong with that? Is anybody okay, going to prove that we're all. standing on a big ball yet, or can we just call it's it basically a, a bandwagon policy? Well, I mean, Nathan, it's true. It's true that it's we just we have to get on the bandwagon. But I don't think that you and me are smart enough to figure out all these really complicated things. Because For I mean, no you, offense, you, you've never met me. And I know, I've never met you, so I'm not going to assume yeah. your intellect, but I used to run the largest research group in the world. I've debated NASA employees, land surveyors, PhD astrophysicists, people that run Earth Curve websites. They're all clowns. They have no proof. They all talk about vain religious superstitions. They, land surveyors don't even know the curvature formula for the Earth. And that's what I'm saying is we're just regular people, but there are incredible scientific mechanical things one, out there that we all the trust name of one. well give like the name of one scientist. like cell phones you and i oh. do not in any way understand how cell phones work but the X I do. they have, a acceler they have accelerometers in them and the cell phone accelerometers are calibrated on a level non-rotating non-moving surface so yeah but it's actually a flatter roof as your cell phone there bro no i don't think so because the, the these things are created by scientists who understand waves and frequencies and all these things, they create no, silicon chips and they create, you know, I mean, they transport all our voices across the whole plane of the earth or across the globe. That you're standing on a ball? It's, it's not, but I think it's proof that the scientists know what they're doing. Hey, my man, my man. That, scientists, that, scientists, that, scientists, that, scientists don't make that, cell phones. David, scientists don't make cell phones. Engineers make cell phones. Okay. But scientists with science, do don't science, they? They do, scientists do science experiments. Science experiments are cause and effect tests, hypothesis tests. You have an independent and dependent value in every experiment. Now, I was waiting for Taylor to tell me when he used models in natural science and when those, those were going to be the independent or the dependent variable, but I couldn't get a word in earlier. Yeah, so even just the, the simple model of the DNA letters, VCTG or ATCG. Those that's a model. The and little picture a of a cell. Experiment. Hold on, just to be sure we hear the rest from Snake. Models and experiments are not equal. Okay. You, you use... already told us the scientific method includes experiments. You already uh -huh. said that. So you're contradicting yeah. yourself. No, I never said models are the exact same thing as experiments. Experiments can use models. models in science. That's what Correct. you said. I'm not straw manning you. You can go back. Okay. So we also we use, use models in. Well, I'm still we talking. Also use, Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean Sorry, to be I, talking while you were interrupting me. Go no, ahead. I thought you were done. 
No, can we, okay. When do we use models in natural science? Go. When do we use models? I just told you a couple models. We use, okay. there are mathematical models for populations. Populations what, is not natural science, bro. Yes, it is. All. Natural yep. science has to do with cause Animal? and effect in nature. Population Animal populations? Cause and effect. So when we cause analyze the cause and effect of... So when we analyze the cause and effect of why certain animal populations grow or shrink and or how uh, certain genes grow or shrink in, in uh, populations, that's not natural science? Wow, it looks like we- Okay, show me you, you doing that using a model. You're just, you're just saying that. Show <laughs> me you doing all that science with a model. Yeah, I can look up a page or a, an article for you. You using can look that, up some I didn't on have, internet. I didn't- just yes, hear, published. Just hold on, Snake, or uh, just to hear yeah, the rest of what Snake was saying. There are published materials on this. I'm not sure why you're skeptical about this. Uh, going back to cell phones, uh, hold on. Uh, going back to cell phones, scientists who are engineers, who are scientists, use models to, they use uh, schematics and blueprints to create what is going to be built in reality. Most robots who put together these things have models so that they can put together cars and cell phones, things like that. All right, and um, as for uh, as for the NASA claim that we uh, use flat Earth models, yeah, that's that's for short range, basic, like intro level calculations. It's only short range, not for the whole Earth. Okay, hey, now and, go ahead and give us scientific evidence for the globe. Go ahead. Um, well, since you don't like models, I can give you a couple pictures. Is I'm sure you know. Like I'm models? sure you know the Lake Pontchartrain. <laughs> you can literally see the bridge and the power lines curve over it. That scientific evidence. Okay, can I respond to that? Can I respond to that? Because I've been to Lake Pontchartrain. I've done observations at Lake Pontchartrain. I've met flat earthers that were became flat earthers because of Lake Pontchartrain. So Taylor, have you been to Lake Pontchartrain? No, I've seen pictures. No, no, you haven't. I was just there this year, actually 15 states trying to find the curve of the earth. And let me tell you, it's not a Lake Pontchartrain. I took a time lapse and put it on my YouTube. I've also done long range ob observations. You can see buildings on the other side that should be obstruct obstructed by the downward drop that you didn't understand earth should have earlier. And I had to repeat it for you. Okay, so earth should drop in all directions. So just saying somewhere you haven't been and saying it curves there is a really stupid proof sees in a flat earth debate. Not when you have pictures of it. Would you accept the testimony of someone who pictures. went to space and said, I've been to space? Obviously not. So you have, so, so you have selective skepticism. Hold on. No, I don't. I don't believe people that say they go to Narnia either because Narnia doesn't exist in closets. Oh, so you're begging the question fallacy. No, I'm telling you, I don't believe known liars. And I know for a fact the sky is a map and a clock. We're not blasting through space. We don't have stellar parallax. We have astroarchaeology, sky maps, sky clocks. They use sextants and astrolabes to celestial navigate. So anyone who tells you they go up in the heavens in a rocket and they saw a ball, you're just gullible. And we asked you for scientific proof and you said, well, I could show you some pictures. Robert Simmons who made the most famous picture of the globe started with a blank circle. You were talking about earlier how composites doesn't mean it's not a real picture. He said he started with a blank circle and then he put scans in of the earth and then it looked fake and flat. So he had to add highlights and hit control Z, which means copy and paste a lot to make the clouds look more real. Dude, you're joking, bro. You were so out of your league. It just got so smoked. Because we have pictures. Actual measurements and pictures, and you don't. Because you don't have a picture of the entire right. Earth. Show me right. one. A chance to Show respond. me a picture. Show me one. Okay. A real photo of a ball Earth. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready. Dun, dun, dun. Is it showing? Yep. Yep. What else do you want? Well, there's some curve. Uh, you said you were going to show us a picture of the Earth from space, not a zoomed in refracted bridge. It's not zoomed in or refracted. So he does. That's have a not of the zoomed in, bro. I've been there. That's the very tip. You can only see. You can count the number of pylons. There's 47. You don't even know how many pylons there are across the bridge. 
How many pylons doesn't are in this matter. picture? If it, it goes, does matter. If it, because curved, if it doesn't bridge, it's uh, uh, obey the laws of perspective you know about. for a flat model, then it's curved because it's disappearing over the curve. Why are you still under the about horizon? Models? Why are you still talking about models? We don't live in a Because model. we can that, test the variables in models. I just debunked it. No. You I did not debunk it. the concept of models, no. An idea, a this, concept of a model? Mm -hmm. You haven't even shown us when you used a model to prove the globe, bro. You haven't even used the model I didn't hear anything either of you said. You're talking about models, bro. You are obsessed with models. You should go look at a Victoria's Secret catalog. We need proof the Earth's a globe. <laughs> Okay, but Nathan, like, what you're looking at this picture here, and what, what I mean, what do you you say that's refraction? I've been to that bridge. It's refracted. He just cropped the horizon, which is the most refracted part of the entire picture. If you actually look at the entire picture, the bridge is not curving for like way more of the freaking part of the bridge. There you go. It's a straight line until you get to the little part showing curvature. Who, who put that up? Did you just put that up, Taylor? That's on. Mm -hmm. That's a flat Earth picture, bro. So no, it's not. Shows it shows curvature beyond right. the horizon. It also shows the amount of pylons and that your picture is cropped, bro. Well, it's your not. It's not cropped. a straight line, though. It's, Let me look honestly, at some of these red lines. They're not. They're not equal with those pylons. That's what it would way. look like on a flat Earth. The bottom of the pylon. That's how perspective right works. Right there on the very bottom red line. Those are all straight until you get to the very small part of the picture that he's zoomed in on with a telescope, okay? You're not going to see curvature over very short distances. You should. According to the globe Earth math, the horizon should be at 1.225 uh, no. times or two, 1.225 miles times the square root of the observer's height and feet, bro. You can't say no. That's the globe math. Tell me what it is. Where's the horizon then? How far On a away globe, is the horizon? we do not expect to see curvature in small ranges. So what are you like, showing me right now, bro? This is over You're a long distance. This part not a long distance. with the miles. red part, you wouldn't see curvature on. You would only see curvature beyond that point because that's a long okay, range distance. I mentioned a 270 mile picture, okay? Bar de Krenz is 270 miles. So you're going to tell me this isn't a short range picture. This is a long range picture. Bro, I've been to that bridge. People became flat earthers because of that bridge and because of these pylons. You obviously doctored the photo. You didn't even know how many pylons were there. You've never been there. This is someone undoctored. else's doctored photo. And you're presenting this as proof of your globe. I thought we have pictures of the entire globe. You, were you gonna Do you have pictures of it? Did you bring back pictures of it? Every picture of Earth is a flat what? Earth photo. Except for this one. Yeah, no, Maybe that's still flat there. Earth. He's oh, observed it. He's oh, actually refracting the horizon. The, the pillars line up in a flat line before you get to the refracted part, part of the horizon. So they line up in a straight line. If it was curving at the horizon, it would have to be curving in the foreground, too. How do you it only curves that? past the horizon because the horizon is when the curve begins. You don't understand the okay, model. Oh, the horizon is when the curve begins. And how far right, out should that be? Because you can't see past the horizon. Okay, because it and curves how far down. out should that be? Taylor, how far out should the horizon be according to the map? About three miles. About three miles. Oh, really? And how far uh, is this bridge? Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but it's above I know the horizon. Exactly how far it is. It's know 22 how miles. Okay. So, bro. You shouldn't even uh -huh. see past three miles, and you're trying to use a zoomed-in part of a flat Earth proof. This but you already flat Earth, and you just admitted it. You just and said you the already horizon agreed with me. Three miles out. Hold on, you're interrupting me. You just said the horizon should be three miles out, and then showed us a picture of the horizon 22 miles away, bro. Nope. Holy crap! All right. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> okay, let me let me get okay. in here. Okay, so we've well, we've seen. We've if seen I could pictures. respond real quick, go ahead. I'm sorry, but. The horizon, three miles. The thing above the horizon, which he agreed with me twice, which is why he ran away, is can you can see further than the horizon. So sorry, sorry, John Go. I, I just it's funny to me. I mean, we got a picture of this thing that clearly, I mean, it looks like it's curved, but then we'll see other pictures where it looks like it's flat. So I, I just don't understand what are we to do. I, I, I think that there's not, I mean. If you just look at it, it looks like it's curved. You'll see other ones. It looks like it's flat. So where does that leave us? 
You know what I mean? You're 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 muted. Water's level. Okay, so again, uh, Oxford scientists measured the, the Bolivian salt flats, 100 miles, just 62 miles, 100 kilometers distance, no curvature. I know, but those same people, they don't Wait, agree you that know it's flat. What? So then you're admitting that that's proof of a flat well, earth right I, there. I haven't seen it, but I would think that oh. the people that measured it would not agree with you. Okay, anybody can go to my website. It's waterslevel.com. You can go up to flat earth proofs. I have the entire Bolivian salt flat document right there. The website is there, the link where they actually measured it and it turned out to be flat. Well, you said, even still, yourself said it wasn't flat. flat. It was water. just kind of curved. You're missing 781 meters according to model boy over here. You're but missing it's not, the, you're missing the curve. But it's not flat. It's curved. It's slightly curved. One meter, dude. Your waist down. You're supposed to have 781 of those, but it doesn't exist in reality. But it's not. I mean, it's not flat. And the people then, that measured it don't think that the Earth is flat, do they? If this isn't about what people think. It's not about what people believe. No, people no it is on. what it is what people think because I mean, you and I, we trust. Again, cell phones work, cars work, airplanes work. Why are you work. changing the subject? We're talking about the Earth. Stop no, I know, but things. we, but I don't think that. I think this is kind of the point of like my intro is that you and me and everybody else, we're just people. I'm an electrician. Stop including Nathan's a farmer. us in what you are and what you do. But I, we're all, you don't even know who I am. You don't I, know what I, I do. We're all people. Know we're all humans. We're all looking at this same thing. We're all trying to figure out this confusing world. And I have come to the conclusion. That when I look out on the earth, it looks flat to me. I don't feel like it's moving. But there's a lot of things that aren't intuitive to me. Like I, when I drive home from work and the moon follows me home, I think it looks like it is, but it's not because it just looks like it because it's far away. So there's a lot of things that are intuitive, but they're they're wrong. Don't you agree? Well, if you have 62 miles, uh, 781 missing meters of curvature... That's flat earth right there. But right? couldn't that be just earth. a misunderstanding of the measurements? There's no misunderstanding, bro. 62 miles measured. There should have been 781 meters. There's under a meter of vertical drop. There's no misunderstanding. Yeah, There's no... I know, but to oh, me you're that... you're not a scientist. You don't know what's going on. It's been measured. Like, that's and numbers it, and, over to the globe. And, and me looking at that thinks, okay, well, it's not flat, and it's kind of curved. So that leaves us back to square zero where, where do we go from here it is flat one meter one meter of curve. that's not curvature it's it's a meter of vert if the earth was a ball according to model boy there should be 780 meters there why are there not you answer me this you john it, God. look again i don't know so if you don't know, let's talk to somebody who knows taylor why? i don't think any of us know 780 meters oh, missing at the Bolivian fall flat Jeez. See, in a debate, you have to cite experts. I'm citing an expert who actually did the But you're citing an expert that disagrees with you. It's not about agreement, dude. Scientific consensus is not even scientific evidence. It's not, it's, oh, he thinks it's a he thinks it's a globe, so then he measured a flat earth, so then it can't be flat because he thinks it's a globe. Do you realize the logic that you're using here? No, it's about you not understanding why oh, he got to those go. conclusions because you don't know as much as the experts. Fighting. He's back. Dude. The snake is back to gaslight again, dude. <laughs> I right. love gas. You, so you understand why he came to those conclusions? Because why, even though you, you even though you think that it says these things, and he came to a different conclusion, you, you're telling me you know exactly how he came to his conclusion that it's a globe. He measured it using uh, he's doing topography, which is the study of land surfaces. There should have been 780 meters of curvature, but there isn't. Globe debunked. Why are we still talking about this? Let's move um, on. To and Boring. yeah, you do know that the land goes up and down like mountains and hills, right? So it's not it's not a perfect flat sphere. Water. It's flat water. Okay, and and it's it's got a hundred kilometers with just okay. under a meter. Okay, there, there so are you don't understand why he came to the conclusion Taylor, that the Earth is still. Taylor, you understand you won't have flat water on a ball, on a ball, right? You understand that. Let's right? talk about why uh, water curves. It doesn't. It's a property of fluid static, fluid static states. A body of water at rest, a body of water at rest is level and horizontal to its container. Can you show us water conforming to the shape of a curved surface? Yeah. Oh, uh, 
show you my document again. If you really want to. Like an observation. Well, I mean, like, you know, he's just going to he's going to show you just a ball that's covered in water. Wow, in the... that's a ball with water falling off the sides. What happens when you spin it? Clings it to the sticks? side. But it's clinging to yeah. the sides. Mm -hmm. It's falling off the sides, guys. <laughs> but it's still clinging to the sides. <laughs> this is hilarious. The also, ball is not sustaining have... the water, as their globe says it should. And he's saying that this is okay. globe earth proof. This is a joke. No, no, I'm saying that's proof that water curves. So let's talk about why water would curve around a globe. Because you don't that's understand gravity. That's not water gravity. at rest, bro. I said water at rest. So you just straw man an argument with water moving and falling off a ball and thought that was a good proof to show flat earthers that water sticks to a ball. Well, it does. Because it's uh, sticking to the ball. Us, water at rest conforming to a sphere. Let's go to a university. I just did that. Course. Hold on. So no, that water was not at rest, bro. You're Hold confused on. with the word rest. Rest this means not moving. Static. Yeah, you can move those or you can stop them from moving. I've done it. What, how would you stop the water from moving? Freeze it? No, the ball. You can stop the ball from moving. The water doesn't move. It's just on the surface. It's called surface tension. All right, so we had models. Now we're using... You, you, you get out of the shower, the water sticks to you, right? This is you not get out evidence. When right. you get out of the shower, does water stick to you? Yeah, but well, there's a problem. Yeah, with same that, thing here. The reflection, the reflection on that ball you showed us, uh, it would not match the reflection we see at sunrise and sunset or on long flat hallways. If you looked at a sunset on that ball, it would look nothing like what you observe here, Snake. You understand that? Lighting is irrelevant in that model. So, let's say this is a dense object. This is this I is said? air. What? I thought okay. I answered it. Reflections, reflections on a curved surface are not what we see in reality. In reality, like on water, the ocean, we see reflections of a flat surface. That's great, but I, I don't think we you don't. Do that. Great. I mean, how that in that? Little demonstration, I've already, I've already explained to you that you see flatness till the horizon, which is where it starts curving. Yeah, right. Nathan, I mean, that first picture, you've got like a tiny, you know, a short building that's flat. And then you've got a long ocean that most of it is flat. Locally, the Earth is flat. You don't understand all the water on Earth should curve if we live on a ball, bro. Well, I, I, I know, but curve that? so, the ball so tiny. The surface of the water, it actually debunks gravity, too, because if gravity pulls all the water towards the center of a ball, then the surface of Earth should curve and we would live on a ball with gravity but we don't have mm -hmm. any gravity. We don't have a ball and the water's flat. You just said the ocean's flat right there, bro. You were like this close to becoming flat earther and you showed up to debate flat earthers. I don't get it. I don't get so it. if we have a dense object and not dense air around it, which direction does it fall? Gas moves in all directions until it bounces off the walls of the container. That's actually in the it definition. It falls of gas. in all directions. It doesn't fall in all directions. It moves in all directions. Okay, so which direction does the ball move? What ball? The ball but that I've drawn here. Ball Dense ball. Like move. No, this is a this is a hand sized ball. This is a hand sized ball. Pretend this is a rock. Okay, hold on. Rock. Which direction does it fall? This, this way. Is two logical fallacies because this what way. He's trying to use a model. He's trying to this way. Model number two. He's begging the question that we are this way. A ball. When he's supposed to be actually proving it. No, I am not begging the question. You don't even understand what that means. I've made no claim. I'm asking you a question. That's not what begging the question is. You don't understand this that ball, either. Is this the ball model that you're claiming we live on? This is a hand-sized rock surrounded by air. Which direction does it fall? Wherever you pick it up uh, and drop it. You. What, what did you do with the rock? Tell yeah. us your steps. I threw that it into the... Floating in midair, I threw it into the you air. threw it into the air. Mm -hmm. Well, then there you go. There's so, your cause and effect. Cool story. You're the one who caused it. Why does it slow down and where does it fall? You're the one controlling well, that. Slows down it hits so you don't understand part. how basic forces work. Are you saying you that can't, gravity is a force? Hold on. Are you saying gravity is a force? You can't describe why an object moves in a particular gravity direction? Gravity is not a force. Hold on. Let's smash this one real quick. Gravity is not a force. That's great. It acts like a force. Now, tell me. So it's not a force. Like a so force. it's yeah, not it acts a force. like a force. It's not a force, right? It's not a force then. 
Yeah, I don't care. Course, right, Taylor? Ah, he said oh, you I don't, don't care. care. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. <laughs> this is a joke. All right, dude. so far we've got him to admit we've got him to admit the horizon should be three miles out, but he tried to prove the globe with a picture of the horizon twenty something miles out. Okay, yeah, it's curving it's beyond the now. horizon. I, I I just want to recap how many times you debunked your own model. Okay. This is getting good. By showing proof of it, yep. Sure. You didn't show proof and of it. And now you're you avoiding the question of why, is there, why do things... Again. No, I'm not. You paused. And you interrupted me. No, I so didn't. I was continuing my, <laughs> All right, my stream of thought. So you can't even tell us why things fall. You've drawn a black you star, a, ball, a little ball on a chalkboard, bro. You think you're proving globe right now? You already debunked your model saying the horizon should be three miles out. No, I'm asking you. With the horizon farther than three miles out, bro. Oh, no, bro. I'm asking you how. You okay. over small distances. Let's just take this one to the I'm answer. asking you how, why things fall and how they Taylor. Taylor. take a direction. It's picking up a rock why and things, dropping it. Why, things, why do things go up? Teach me. Why do some things go up? Hold on. That's yeah. true. Why do helium balloons Good go question. Up? Yeah, good question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good question. let's so talk about that. Up, some things go down. Well, oh, did wait, you know that? Wait, 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 you guys, come on. Let's talk come about on. that. I'll show come you on. exactly why. Taylor, Taylor, is getting a rock <laughs> and dropping exactly. it on the floor scientific evidence? Yes or no? It's an experiment, so yeah. Okay, okay. give us the dependent and the independent variables. Uh, the independent variable, the dependent, the, yeah. The independent uh, uh, variable is the rock. Uh, are you listening? You said the independent variable is the rock. That's yeah. The thing you're going to change. Please proceed. The dependent so, variable oh yeah, you're uh -huh. is you're what direction? Rock. Let's prove rock. Okay. What's the dependent variable? Is uh, where it goes. Where it okay. goes. Okay. You <laughs> got this. Okay. Hilarious. So here's the here's a naturally occurring phenomenon. Rock where it goes. <laughs> independent variable, the thing you're going to manipulate, rock. Independent variable, the effect, where it goes. Now, let's see. The cause of that would probably be you picking it up and throwing it. Brilliant. That was absolutely ding, brilliant. Ding, 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 ding. Bravo. You're an excellent scientist. That was a great science experiment. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Globe Earth Logic. This is Globe Earth Science. This is how much they don't understand scientific method this okay. is so we're trying to measure taylor, the direction taylor, of the rock me, let me, which is a variable let me, let me get in here taylor for a little mm -hmm. bit um nathan in waters level l let me ask you like where where's your line for when you start to not trust the experts we, we're did, bible we're says, debunking it right all here things. <laughs> bible says test all things and hold fast to whatever is true so once i know they lied about one thing 9-11 or wars, or wearing a diaper on your face, even though the box says it doesn't protect you from the thing you're wearing the diaper for. Okay, so even though I know they lie about things, you just question everything. Just question everything. If you can't prove something, why believe it? Who cares? But you leave you it trust? I don't know category. Leave it in the trust? I don't know category. And then definitely don't go on debates, debating people who know a hell of a lot more about it, and show up and say, oh, we're just people... We're no, I, need, I am an expert on the shape of the earth, bro. I ran the largest research group in the world. I have debated the largest YouTubers, more NASA employees than any flat earther in human history. Okay, I got it all on video. I got to walk around with spy glasses on because NASA employees run away when I pull my camera phone out and start asking questions about the second law of thermodynamics and water. And these are the rocket scientists that NASA hires. Give me a break. Bro. Okay, so but you are, but you trust that airplanes work. Right. I know Harry airplanes work. The FAA trains pilots to fly on a flat, non-rotating Earth. So, so why are we talking about airplanes? Other than the fact because they prove you the flat Earth. no, Cell because phones. you trust that, that you trust that the science behind them works. Yeah, and they fly over a flat, non-rotating Earth. And then, That's but at what point? So, but why not? But why not? Forever. But why not space rockets? Well, because space is fake, violates the second law of thermodynamics. NASA's been caught with green screens harnesses, wires, hairspray, bubbles in space, people ghosting out of screen, things disappearing and reappearing but, okay. out of so NASA, I, NASA, like, I, knew, I, mean, I knew you wouldn't let me finish all the bloopers NASA has. I knew you were going to have to interrupt. I because I've not, I haven't seen these proofs, but I'm I'm wondering NASA NASA doesn't just make 
space rockets. They make other things that I think you would agree work and you trust them. What does NASA make besides space rockets? Don't They're they, a space they, agency, bro. Do they make what are you going to talk about, Tang? Tang and Velcro? They make other kinds of planes, don't they? Okay, so guess Ursa Globe. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm, saying, I'm saying it seems to me to be a, a inconsistency to say I trust these engineers and these scientific methods up to a certain point and then decide once it starts kind of getting into the globe, like space thing, and then I don't trust it for whatever reasons. Uh, John, do you think Bill Nye could build an airplane? Who? Bill Nye, the science guy. Do do I, 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 no, I, I don't think he could at all. No, no, dude, the dude's a total doofus. So he's allegedly like a science guy, right? So engineers build planes. The mainstream science guys are doofuses that tell you boats go over the curve of the earth. Bill Nye said boats go over the curve of the earth. Uh-oh, somebody better tell Neil deGrasse Tyson that because he said you can't see the curve from 120,000 feet. Now, do you see the problem here? Bill Nye says you can see the curve from the beach. Neil deGrasse Tyson says you can't see the curve from a Red Bull space jump. There's a problem there. So, so it's not about not believing them. The story doesn't add up. Neil but, deGrasse Tyson posted Earth rotates under field goals, and that's why this one field goal was made on the Super Bowl at this particular latitude, trying to sound smart on his Twitter. The problem is if Earth rotates under field goals, it would rotate under everything else in the air. But that Birds, doesn't seem that drones, doesn't seem to me to be insects. That doesn't seem to me to be a reason to mistrust the whole of the scientific you know okay if in, mainstream science says you live on a ball that spins but the earth doesn't spin and it's not a ball that's a pretty good reason to well, not no. trust mainstream science i agree with you that it doesn't feel like it spins but how do how is somebody like you and i supposed to under you know comprehend the vastness of the whole planet uh, it does feel like it spins if you have enough of these and you get drunk, okay? <laughs> the, pro the problem is when you test Earth, every test, Aries failure, Sagnac interferometers, ring laser gyroscopes, star trails, you have to set your camera on a stationary object. You can't be on a merry-go-round hey, so and film yeah. star trails. Let me ask you about so, that ring laser gyroscope. You, yes. it, it seems like you, you kind of trust that it works – even though I don't understand how ring laser gyroscopes work. And then when it comes back 15 degrees per hour, then we reject it saying, well, something's wrong. You know, so at what point do you say this technology works, but it doesn't also work with this other thing? It seems arbitrary. Okay. Do you know what a SAGNAC interferometer is? I, I do not. No, no. But see, that's a ring laser gyroscope. It's a SAGNAC interferometer. Sagnac, very interesting. He said, we observed interference effect turns out to be the optical vortex effect due to the motion of the system with respect to the ether. Sagnac G. L. Ether, L. Pars 1913. So Sagnac himself, the one who made the ring laser gyroscope, because you're all about trust in the experts, he said it doesn't prove Earth rotates. There's but no such thing as ether. But that doesn't okay, seem to be experiments that prove either. The guy who invented a ring laser interferometer, what we were talking about, said it's not Earth rotation causing the ring laser gyroscope, a.k.a. Sagnac interferometer. So you just believe people. So you just believe people just because it confirms your bias. Is that it? No, not at all. Well, I don't have to believe anything about it. It measures light. It doesn't measure the Earth rotating. Are you kidding me? I've had played with one. Have you so, ever played with but a what is, what is it in your in your perspective? What is it measuring? Pitch, roll, yaw. It's like when you turn left and right, measuring that sort of stuff. So, but you wow. accept you accept that it's measuring something, but 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 you accept only the things that kind of correspond to your thing and not all, and and not the globe thing. So that seems to be inconsistent. They don't use it to prove Earth rotates. They use it to measure pitch, yaw, and roll in an airplane. That's what it's used for. Now, the yes. guy who made it said the interference patterns in the light is caused by the ether, not the rotating spinning ball Earth that doesn't rotate because nobody feels it. 
We went over this. Well, again, I, I think that it, I, I agree with you. It doesn't feel like it, but I don't base my world on my, only my empirical thing. That's why like, we're talking about experiments and observations we could do, and they it, all yes. prove it's non-rotating. Every well, that, failure. If you heard about that that's one, where I disagree. I think it, it's, it's, like, it's like the moon. It looks like it follows me home every night. But it it doesn't, right? You agree it doesn't. No, you don't I feel forces at equilibrium. I is centered. It actually there's another debunk for the globe because if you move to a different portion of the Earth, you don't see different features on the moon. The moon is you centered. This entire place was literally made for you and Snake and James and my partner who left. It's you centered, so it's designed to be viewed from your puny point of view. For example, when you have reflections off the water, that's only a reflection for you which reflections are another proof of flat earth. I'm just going through it. Tonight. We're going personal so, domes now? That's on both models. Bro. No, it's not. You know that, right? Yes, no, it is. Not. There's an atmospheric dome around everyone on a globe because you have a medium around you called air, Snake. You understand there's air around you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it changes. It's different for each person. You and know the fact that, that there's... Right? Snake, will you agree with that? changes? The air person the air changes? Around the air around me is different than the air around you, right? Uh, yeah, we're in a different space. So you're going to have a different personal perspective based on the refraction and, and the medium that you're in than mm -hmm. I'm going to have. Whether you live on a ball or you live on a flat earth, you just admitted it, bro, and you tried so to make the, fun of me. That's right, how because if the, moon, if the moon is in the atmosphere, you should be able to see different sides of it. it it's not going to show you the same thing from every perspective. That's why your personal dome thing makes no sense because you're trying to say that we don't have each different perspective. We're seeing the same thing from different positions. Whereas in a re reality, you should be able to see different things from different positions. Well, especially if it's a curved surface, you should see different features from different positions on earth. Would you agree with that? Yes, and we do. That's why the stars are important, but you don't think the sky shows anything we're not talking about the stars we're talking about the surface of the moon can you show me where the we have different features on the moon from one place on earth than the other you just said we have that no 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 we don't i said we should have that if we're on a flat earth and the moon is local and in the atmosphere you need if to you're listen on a ball and the moon's a ball too okay you move on the earth and you would see a different side of the moon ball not in geosynchronous orbit that? which is what we have satellites on oh so we don't see different features on the moon from different points on. yeah that's not a problem on the globe model but it's a problem with the flat earth right. model so basically it's like the moon follows you and the moon's you centered and you want to make fun of me because we have personal atmospheric dome on both models no, no it's saying. because it's all always right, so facing the earth you reason? can't get to around it unless you go into space hey. You hilariously earlier said they had no reason to lie about the shape of the earth. And then your teammate went right after you and said, I understand the elite lie about everything. And I understand NASA is just a money making organization. Do you understand that your teammate debunked what you said right after you said uh, it? he didn't when we talked about this beforehand and we both agreed on the, on the same points. You said there is no reason to lie. And your teammate said they're in the business of making money. Why don't we let John correct you on the record for that? I, yeah, I don't understand what kind of contradiction you're trying to point out here. Uh, NASA is making money. Best way to make money is make good products. You said that, John, at the beginning of this debate, right after Taylor said NASA has no reason to lie. <laughs> no, that, so that's if not. If they're faking space and getting. That's not, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be talking while you were interrupting no, me, John. Go ahead. So they give them sixty million dollars for space exploration, but if space is fake and we live in a flat contained Earth, then there's a very good reason to lie. If you're a space agency, Taylor, your partner figured that out. You haven't. But you're. I, I'm saying they're 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 not lying about what they're doing. They're not lying about the efficacy of their products. That's not at all what I'm saying. The lie is that okay. we need them. You check out that product. You should check out their products, Sean, sometime because so, they have harnesses, green screen bloopers, CGI, glitches, people phasing in and out of the thing, ghosting out. You've got bubbles in space. My friend asked an astronaut about bubbles in space. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's just dust. Then he followed him to another speech, asked him about bubbles in space, and he's like, I've never heard of this. 
He just asked you the same question a couple months ago. Except the bubbles, the bubbles go in. Face. Sorry. Uh, the bubbles go in all directions. Uh, that's all right. which, I didn't mean to be talking while you were in the middle of interrupting me, Snake. Go ahead. I thought, I thought you were done. This, these things uh, happen. You need to be a little less touchy about it. You yeah. thought and Earth I, was a globe. I, yeah, I stopped. And I wasn't done. You were wrong. Correct. I was wrong. So I stopped yeah. as soon as I heard you keep going. Okay. Okay. Then uh, you, also you stopped. Uh, can't uh, agree uh, on oh, 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 I'm still talking. Sorry. Okay. So the bubbles in space. No, it's okay. These things happen. The bubbles in space are shown. I mean, th this has a cause in the ventilation. So the bubbles are shown to go in all different directions. That does not happen underwater. So they aren't water bubbles in a simulated space environment. And you can prove it because bubbles do not move like that. Um, if there's currents under the water or turbulence <laughs> under the water, yes, you can make a bubble. So there's a current going like this in, oh, in as much space. Oh, you're in the middle of interrupting me again. So the currents are like this? Sorry, bro. What were you saying? The currents are like this? In this much space? The currents can go in any direction. You've got multiple people not only filming, but faking the spacewalk. You would not have bubbles on a 17,000 mile per hour, 5.9 miles a second. That's how fast they say it goes. And they say they built it in space and nobody got hurt, but there's no video of it. It just magnificently appeared out of nowhere. That's freaking hilarious, right? But uh, according to Snake, this is something you can easily test in your backyard because earlier in his introduction, he said there's the ISS and then later on went to say, this is all stuff you could test from your backyard. Yeah, bro. You could just get on the ISS from your backyard. Good call, no, you Snake. Snake. Snake, you said nations can't agree on anything. Have you ever heard of an Antarctic treaty? Oh, yeah. That's one of my favorites. What does it actually say? It says no militaries are allowed there. You're about to say that they... Put the military bases there, right? No, I'm about to say it says Snake was wrong because Snake said nations can't agree on everything and they all agreed on the Antarctic Treaty, you bozo. Okay, God, dude. And? All right, so composites aren't fake. So you think I was being literal? You think I oh, I'm said sorry. that... When you were literally I'm doing sorry. your introduction and trying to well, yeah. you were being sarcastic? Uh, being sarcastic. I was being a little bit hyperbolic in saying they can't. Did I say everything? Or they can't no, agree you said anything? Can't agree on yeah. Anything, but yeah, that's not true. They, they all agree. That's not strictly true. They do all agree that the earth is a globe. But um, yeah. Okay, great. Well, I guess it's a globe. Let's just go with that bandwagon fallacy. All the nations said it's a globe. So it's a globe. All the nations said slavery is good. All the nations I see said you, you should get a I see you missed the point. Every three weeks. Okay, you you kidding me? That your proofsies, your globe proofsies, you're gonna bring up in your introduction is oh the nations can't agree on anything, but they all agree Earth's a globe. Okay, I see oh, you sorry, missed bro. the point. So I, guess, I guess it's a globe. Also, you said we have live feeds from space. When when have you done a live feed from space? Uh, may I feed. address that Are point? So feed? so you seem to have uh, missed the point that how does every nation on Earth? be unwavering for hundreds of years on the same conspiracy. That's, that's not a proof. That's just makes me very incredulous. Uh, the other point that you mentioned, do I have a live stream from space? No, we can watch it. We can watch live streams from our backyard. Oh. We can watch things oh. get can't be faked from our backyard and we can watch videos of the ISS that can't be faked from our backyard. Okay, because earlier you said we have live feeds, and I thought like you, like some, you actually had some sort of live feeds. No, no, no. What you meant no. to say was we can watch. What you meant to say was we can watch live feeds and pretend they're real. Okay. No, what what cool. I meant was so, we as a human race. Excellent. Um, sun can't speed up or slow down for no reason. You said that in your opener, Snake. I said that has to be in your model. I don't have a model, but you did say that in your opener, didn't you, Snake? No, I said you don't have a model because all of these things that would have to be in a model contradict each other, so you can't make one. Earlier in the debate, Snake, 
did you say it's not possible to have the sun speed up and slow down for no reason? I did not say that. Okay, what did you say in your introduction about the sun speeding up and slowing down? Let me read you verbatim. Laterally. Let me let me refresh your memory and moving laterally. The sun I would... know your argument better than you can, bro. This is ridiculous. That's funny. Uh I know. The sun would have to move up and down in latitude for some unknown, unpredictable reason and then change speed and route for a different unknown, unpredictable reason to spin around either pole. And also okay, being you know an atmosphere, you could to go to that? the sun, but of course, no floor for with a pilot's license will bother. That's talking about a flat earth model. Do you know why it would have to do that on a flat earth? Because. What? Because that's how we observe it moving in the sky. And if we track that on a map, that's what happens. It doesn't have okay, a so circular how movement. We observe it happening. What is your point? You said the sun would have to speed up and slow down for no apparent reason, and it's all ridiculous. But then you just said that's what we see it doing. Are you, do you hear yourself? Uh, do you hear what I'm saying? That's what it would be doing on a flat Earth. That is not yes, what happens in reality. Good. If we're on a globe, it's not speeding up or slowing down. It's all at the same rate. Oh, really? The Earth? Is the Earth at the same rate? The Earth's rotation is at the same rate every day. Oh, it doesn't speed up and slow down and have an elliptical orbit for no reason? Uh, we understand how ellipticals work. And that's not does for no reason. Earth, we understand exactly why they work, which is why I keep trying to ask Earth you, move. and you can't, you keep running away, how gravity works. And now you want to talk about gravity. Okay, we're talking it's all about, about gravity. The Earth. No, gravity proves gravity. the gravity no. proves the globe Earth, which is why you hate it so much, which is why you deny it. We already, which is why you don't understand how gravity works, and I can now prove it. But you won't engage. But you won't engage in the questions because you're scared of being proven wrong. Yeah, right, Nathan. Well, does let, gravity work on inverse square law? Let me, let me ask Nathan. Do you, which, no, 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 no. He said I don't understand gravity. Does well, gravity work real, on the inverse square law, Taylor? Okay, let me ask yeah. another question. Does gravity work on the inverse square law? Yeah. Yeah, it does, because it's m1 plus m2 over distance squared, right? So would gravity increase or decrease the farther away you get from the surface of the Earth? It would decrease. It would decrease. So the closer you get to the surface of the Earth, it would increase, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of like magnets. Okay, great. So we've got problems, because objects reach something called terminal velocity. Are you familiar with what terminal velocity is? Uh huh. That's because of the air resistance, which creates a normal force. Are you under? Are you? How familiar are you with apparent right. normal forces? More gaslighting. Excellent. How is? Okay, I asked. That's a point. question. Are you familiar you with already, what normal forces are? You already said things are increasing in gravity as they go down towards Earth's surface, and I said terminal velocity, and you tried to gaslight me and say I don't understand things. That is your only argument. I did not your say that. Your joke. So let's get back to the topic. Let's get back to the topic of terminal velocity. When I did not say When something is falling that. down, it reaches... Why are you interrupting me again, bro? What did you say? I did not try and gaslight you and say that. I told yes, you why you terminal... Go back and watch the no. video later. No. I told you, you to terminal say, I velocity... I forces and crap, bro. That's gaslighting. No, I asked you if you understood okay. what a normal force was. That's not gaslighting. That's Great. a question. And I asked you, does gravity increase as you go down towards the surface of the Earth? You said yes, right? Yes. Follow along, right? Great. Yeah. So do objects continue to accelerate as they get down towards the surface of the Earth exponentially? Because remember, you said gravity works on an inverse square law. So mm -hmm. this force as things get closer and closer to the surface of Earth, is getting exponentially stronger, but the pair reaches terminal velocity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so do you, so do you understand gravity, that air creates... The pair, oh, the air creates resistance. So now it's not gravity pulling it down, it's the air slowing the apple down. No, it's so both. things don't fall into gravity, oh, they fall Hold on, the listen. Air. Listen very carefully. It's both. Oh, it's both. Okay, so why doesn't you understand? I'm pushing at both sides of this right now. 
you can have forces going in opposite directions. You understand that, right? Do you accept that? Okay, cool story. That's a yes or no question. Yeah, you could. You personally can push on two things in two directions. Uh -huh. What are you saying? Cool. Does so, so does that your pushes down and it pushes up too? Nope. The air pushes. Okay. So when you roll, you when you put your hand out, forces? when you put your hand out the window, what are you feeling? Wind resistance. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that doesn't occur when an object is falling? You missed my entire argument. Let me go over it for you again. I asked a question. You said things are falling because of gravity. Now, I said, does gravity increase or decrease as you get closer to the surface of the Earth? And you said it increases. Well, uh-oh, you got a problem with that because the apple doesn't just accelerate and accelerate and accelerate and accelerate exponentially towards the surface of the Earth. Correct. It seems to reach some sort of firm. I'm not done yet. I'm literally in the middle of speaking. It seems to reach some sort of terminal velocity and correct. then stays at that terminal velocity. I know it's correct, bro. That's mm -hmm. why I'm saying it. That's why I'm talking. So I got to come on here and educate people who don't even agree with each other on whether or not the nations would lie. Like, holy moly. That's gaslighting. So let's tell you, let's, your let's visualize. Teammate, your teammate literally says the elite lie about everything. And you say there's no reason to lie about the shape of the earth. And he literally That's told you, you're lying though. about that. You're gaslighting right now. So an object no, falling, you are. only opener, his all four minutes, go back and listen to it, guys. His whole opener was about how the elite lie to us. Not proof we live on a globe. Four minutes to prove globe. He said the elite are corrupt. NASA's making money. Best way to make money is make good products. I agree with you. NASA is corrupt. You said all this in your opener, bro. This is your teammate, Taylor. So you can keep blindly believing NASA. Mm -hmm. Your teammate doesn't even believe it. No, no, that, that's not that's not at all what I mean by that. I don't I, I don't mean that they're lying about their formulas and their science. That's not at all what I'm saying. You're right, John, because they say they use the Soros cycle. Oh no, this right. is backwards. They admit they use the Soros cycle to predict eclipses, and their paperwork says we use a flat, non-rotating Earth. I'm saying that I agree with you that there's corruption and that their money corrupts. Absolutely. But they're not lying about the efficacy of their science. They're lying about, to me, they're lying that we need them and that we need to go to the planets. We need to give them money. We don't. That's, that's what I'm saying. And don't you agree with me on that? I agree. Yep. We don't need to give NASA any more money to fake space. James, we're way over on time here. If we go to Q&A ASAP, that'd be great because I'm done. I'm dusting my feet, bro. We are ready to oh. go to Q&A, but if you have any last remarks as well, Snake and Word of the Wild, I don't want to cut you guys short. So what have you got in terms of wrapping us up? Uh, short and pithy. Do we have any? Okay. Uh, Super short and pithy. More yeah. So Word um, of the Wild because we haven't heard a lot from him. Yeah, go ahead, John. I could go first if you need a second to gather your thoughts, Taylor. I yeah, don't. I'm ready to go, but I'm ready to go too. Go for it, guys. We'll yeah, go, in. John. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much, James. It's been awesome. I can't wait to do it again. Um, I just don't understand where the line is. Whether we trust all of these things. We believe in buoyancy. We believe in acceleration and we believe in all these things but when it comes to gravity all of a sudden well, i don't believe that we believe that cars work we believe electricity works we believe all these things but then at some point we decide i don't believe it here and i feel like it, there's big inconsistencies there we trust all the science and we trust all of the technology that they bring us up 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 until the point where it starts to suggest the shape of the earth and then we throw it out. It seems to be to be arbitrary and it seems to be inconsistent. Yeah, so I guess I'll just uh, use my time to explain since I wasn't able to. Um, I'm not trying to be offensive when I say you don't understand things, but it's it's clear that you seem to be ignoring the air resistance. Pretend this is air molecules. The fact that it creates a force pushing against an object that is pushing into the air 
he left. <laughs> Very professional. Hey, Nathan. I miss Nathan already. This is your right. time to finish your what you're saying, actually. Sorry. Uh, I just looked up and he was gone. Uh, the fact that an object is pushing into the air creates a force that pushes back, equal and opposite reaction. That means that it can't accelerate infinitely, like in a vacuum. So you're trying to confuse a vacuum model with an air model. And well, there's just a lot of misconceptions like that. I thought we might be able to have a civil discussion about it. But uh, yeah, let's just go to Q&A. We're going to jump right into it. I want to let you know, folks, our guests are linked in the description. And that includes the podcast, folks. If you didn't know, we have a podcast, and that is actually currently linked at the top of the chat and in the description box. You can find our guest links if you're listening via the podcast as well as we put our guest links there too. Next up, thanks so much for your question. This one coming in from Wits It Gets It says, Nathan, call me, bro. We should get back together. Uh, probably fake account. He's got my number. Next up, next up, Bubblegum Gun says, "Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. Why was the live chat disabled after Daniel debate? I do. Oh, that's because if you ever notice, folks, oftentimes the live chat after the debate was live is gone. The reason is whenever a YouTuber, this is true for all YouTubers, when we go into our creator studio and we trim, for example, the intro music or the outro music, what happens is the live chat goes with it. And so that's why uh, you uh, might have been missing that. This one from Not a Chump says, You're damn straight. I'm a baller. Nathan? Juicy. Okay. Nathan <laughs> won't humor at all says answer the question Nathan I don't know which one they meant but Wolf says flat earthers are doing a real service I'm not very confident about how smart I am but then I remember that flat earthers exist thank you Nathan Nathan Brain no you can't even crack a smile or give a little quip back next up Decepticons Forever says last are you says why are sun rays redder during dusk or dawn, Nathan? Yeah, because they're going through more atmosphere. And uh, actually, that's super interesting. If you look at a green flash, the green part of the green flash is above the red, orange, yellow part of the sun. If you look at a Pink Floyd album, when you shine light from below a prism, the green actually appears below the red, orange, yellow spectrum. So sunsets, green flashes, all that stuff's going to prove flat earth. Also, sun rays only come down into your house. Even if you're on the top of a really high mountain and it's sunrise or sunset, the rays are never going to come horizontal or up and hit the ceiling of your house. They're always coming down because the sun is always above your head on a flat, non-rotating earth. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question, MC Toon, your old buddy, Nathan, says, Nathan, not asking about air wake, asking about electromagnetic wake. What is the scientific basis for it causing hurricane rotation? Please provide citations. No, I don't get all my stuff from like citations. Some of the stuff I have to come up with myself and figure it out myself. Now, it's very obvious the sun affects particles in the air. So if you're going to say the sun wouldn't cause things to happen with the atmosphere, you're just goofy, McToon. And I can very easily demonstrate on a flat stationary surface how the wake would move in opposite directions with the sun moving above. You got so it. you okay. can't demonstrate uh, anything. This I would love from, to read that paper. This question from Conrad says, Nathan, how do you how do you – Flat Earthers explain the jet stream. Thank you. Yeah, the sun affects particles in the air. And there you go, jet streams, electromagnetic wave. GPS That's why it's hot. Is it ions or it says, Nathan radiation? Nathan Na at the NASA guy at Starbucks wasn't a debate with him. I never claimed that, that was a debate. I asked him if he knew about all the liars at NASA, and he told me to get out of his face, and don't ever accuse me of that, because he knows they're lying to everybody and stealing your money. To be fair, I think that they were referring to, though, I think you said earlier that you've debated, like, professors and NASA people. They, they were thinking that you were referring to the Starbucks incident as a debate. 
You no, I've ran room. into about eight or nine employees and had multiple debates. One of them was about 10 minutes, one of them about eight minutes. One of them got taken off YouTube because the lady was such a crybaby. She complained to YouTube and uh, she wasn't even uniquely identifiable. It didn't have her first and her last name. She didn't have a special voice that was like Morgan Freeman or something. She was not uniquely identifiable and she still got my video taken down. And then my channel got deleted. This one from Magellan. Brilliant. The assumption of a spherical earth is in practically every single electrical device you own, plus every operating system, every software vendor, etc. Nathan. Nathan. No comment. No. You got accelerometers in your phone calibrated to a fat non-rotating earth. Sextants work, assuming straight lines. Uh-oh. My internet's poopy. This one coming in from Iron Horse. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Your father, Flat Earth Aussie, says, Hey, Globers, why are there undersea cables providing 95% of internet communication if satellites are a thing? Um, I don't know. Isn't it faster? Next up, Fight the Flat Earth says, Lack of change in elevation isn't proof of no curve, Nathan. Oh, okay. And says, if you say so, <laughs> and also says, I've been here five minutes and flat earthers have committed the fallacy of straw man, stolen concept, goalpost moving, ad hom, and false analogy. Good job. <laughs> Nathan, do you agree? Okay. Nathan, you can't uh, just no, roll I over and die like this. It's... What? Sorry, my internet's not good, bro. I'm in the mountains growing weed. You've been going on those websites I told you not to go on. This one. He just glitched. It's it's fake. uh, Nathan is fake. Thanks very much. Says Davey or Nathan, it's one meter elevation difference in salt flat. Please show where it says it's one meter drop. Not the same thing unless you assume it's flat. Same as QE's Bob and Alice straw man. Dumb. I'm not even following that person. It technically was for Davey, so it might have actually been something that Davey said that they were actually asking about. Next up, Kango24 says, Nathan, are the oceans at rest? No, they are not so. Your, therefore, your thing with water at rest being flat is nonsense. Hmm. Nathan? Have you hey, Einstein, up? sometimes the ocean freezes. And it's not moving. Gotcha. And made, made by Jim Bob says, snake is law ever the result of the scientific method? Is law? Correct. Like, uh, I'm not sure what law he's talking about. Like, scientific laws? Second law of thermodynamics. Sure, that, law I, think of thermodynamics. I think that's what they meant. One of those, for example. Is law ever the result of the scientific method? Yeah. Gotcha. And Kango24 uh, says, Nathan, you're a truth up? seeker, right? So, Nathan, did you go do Tom Jump's radar experiment? I would have thought you would be very keen to do that so you could discover the shape of the Earth. Tom Jump. T Jump doesn't have a radar experiment. I was in a debate with him. I asked to see it. He literally told James, Hey, James, could you YouTube it real quick? Look up this. He hasn't done it. It's like $10,000. If you want to send me $10,000, maybe I'll do it. He he did say he did it at his school or whatever. Gotcha. This one coming in from. Oh, I did it. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Fox I was with 10 supermodels. Thanks for your super chat. I didn't see a question attached. Let me know if you had one. And Mark Reed says, Nathan, what are your credentials to lead, quote, the biggest research group in the world, unquote, and can you s- show the research you did as part of this group? Yeah, of course. I put out 800 videos that I got deleted from my YouTube. If you want to email me, I could send you some proof personally. But um, what qualified me was I didn't blindly believe anything and I required everyone to test Earth themselves. So anyone was allowed to be a member, anyone was allowed to contribute to the community, but you had to test earth yourself. You weren't allowed to curse. You weren't allowed to insult people. What qualified me to run it was that I stayed up all day and all night, every waking hour, making sure people followed the rules in the group. And then 
I did the stuff myself too and tested Earth myself, and it's flat everywhere I went. Fifteen states this year started five years ago. Gotcha. And King 24 says, Davy and Nathan, ninety percent of the technology in your smartphone was developed for ICBMs, which is strange if space is fake. ICBM intercontinental ballistic missiles. Is that what you're talking about? This one coming in from your twin yes, brother. Phones were made for twin br brother separated at birth. L fight the flat earth says, ladies and gentlemen, I present you the results of mothers that are beautiful. He's saying your mom's pretty. Isn't that nice? And this one from made by Jim Bob says snake is math science. Uh, yeah. It's part of science. It's a, yeah, it's a scientific <laughs> model. Uh, wrong. It's not. Next up, Elabaka, thank you very much, says Nathan. Laser gyros, <laughs> formerly known as euros, are not only used mm. on planes. Many geodetic labs have large gyros working 24-7 that even pick Earth's wobble. Do your own research. Okay, we'll do. Every time I do, it's flat non-rotating, but I'll, I'll stay on it. Thanks. Nathan, they say, made by Jim Bob says, oh, this is for Snake. Made by Jim Bob says, Snake, can you do science without experiment? Yeah. <laughs> ah, wrong. No. This one coming in from. You can do. You, measurements are part of science as well. Jared A. says, uh, Measurements are not cause and effect Nathan, relationships. Nathan, uh, wrong. Nathan, you keep exposing must, yourself every we, time you we talk. Must keep moving. We have so many questions. I promise, hear you. I promise chat, I'd move fast because we want to get in as, as many questions as we can. Made by Jim Bob says, Snake. No, we got that. Jared A. says, Nathan, if you were to have a flat earth model, would it resemble a snow globe? Yeah, probably something like that. You got it. And Mike, <laughs> surprised. such an amenable answer. I didn't think you were going to be so uh, straightforward. Jared, let's see. Mike Menzies says, thank you, Snake. I'm now a flat earther. <laughs> I, I suspect he was before. Next up. Thank you very <laughs> much. Your K9 <laughs> Strike says, this is my first time seeing Snake, and I like this. You got a fan out there, Snake. They're balancing it out. Next up, Kango24 says, Nathan, your misunderstanding of terminal velocity was unbelievable. As a globing expert, you don't know that things accelerate until the air resistance cancels out gravitational acceleration. The gravitational acceleration should be continually increasing exponentially as you go towards Earth's surface. So you can't just say... It cancels it out because it's canceling out a force that's allegedly getting exponentially bigger and increasing the closer you get to Earth's surface. You don't understand how dumb you sound, dude. Seriously. And you try and gaslight me and tell me, oh, Nate, you don't understand terminal velocity. No, bro. I understand just fine. You believe you live on a spinning, tilted cartoon water monkey ball. Have you done the math on that? Punch out two four says Nathan and or Davey. You get more with sugar than you get with salt. Can you explain how the moon cycles work and why the tides change on a flat Earth? Yeah, exactly. How's it, here's how it works on a flat Earth. So you have the moon in the sky changing phases over a flat Earth that you can test yourself if you go outside and stop blindly believing the Internet and this, what you heard. Cool. This one. Non sequitur. Coming in from Putafoot says, question for Nathan, do you think we live on a model? No, models are concepts. They're abstract. I already went over that. And you're right. Talking about the sky is a non sequitur when you're talking about the shape of the earth. Good job, Snake. Next up, Anonymous, a.k.a. I'm so sorry I forgot to write your name down when I put this in my sticky, says, can't some models work without, oh, this is, I remember, is Bubblegum Gun, says, can't, for you, Snake, can't some models work without depicting reality? Uh, yeah. Next there's up. But yeah, I mean, there's computer models of things that don't exist. So, and and models off of computers too. Yeah. 
You got it. And this one coming in from, do appreciate your question, Ferron Salas, long time. So you could say, we love you just hanging out at the channel. Thanks so much for being with us. Your question was, where's all the pics of the flat earth, quote unquote, edges or walls, Nathan? I've never claimed to have seen the flat earth edge or the flat earth walls travel to Antarctica. It's not just extremely dangerous. My friend had to do it. An icebreaker has like a million pounds of iron in the front of the boat so they can karate chop through three stories of ice. So it's super dangerous. You can't just throw beers in your minivan and go drive to the edge of the earth. And it's restricted. Okay. And I never claimed to have any pictures of the edge. I know you're really interested. Where's the edge of space on your freaking space monkey fairy tale? Do you wake up every morning going, man, if I live on ball in space, I'd sure like to see some pictures of the edge of space. No. But you hear the earth's flat and you're like, show me the edge. <laughs> so goofy, dude. It's hilarious. <laughs> That's you can go to Antarctica, actually. What was that? You can actually go to Antarctica. It's not restricted. Nathan, is this true? I was done talking Book a flight, dude. 20 minutes ago. Are we doing questions from the audience? Or am I we want to let you know, folks, we are very excited. This question coming in from Prof. Phil Bell says, what measurement is the flat earther referring to? Uh, I wish they would have. In the context, I can't remember what context they were referring to. Next up, Truth Nerd says, Nathan, you said astronauts do not see the curve from low Earth orbit. Could you say more about the flat Earth astronauts and low flat Earth orbits? Yeah, uh, check out F Up World. I'll give him a shout out. Joe Hill on Facebook. He just posted a video of astronauts saying the Earth isn't actually a globe from low Earth orbit. And they can't agree on if you see stars or not from low Earth orbit and space. You got it. And this question coming in from, do appreciate it, Fight the Flat Earth says, did Nathan just use Pink Floyd, their album cover, as evidence? Did I dream that? Nathan, is this true? Yeah, the Pink Floyd album cover shows the green under the red, orange, blue, which is the opposite of what we observe in a green flash, proving the sun, the rays are coming from above the horizon, even at sunset, which is when a green flash happens. Next up, Sofa, King Sleepy says, quote, if a triangle has sides one, one, and one, what is the shape? Nathan, sorry, was if the sides. I don't equal, think that was for me. If this, you don't think so? Let me. Well, I. Because uh, if the sides are equal, those are straight lines. You can't use a sextant on a globe, bro. Lyric Edge says, "Which frozen ocean are you referencing, Nathan?" Uh, there's places all over the world where the ocean, for, not the entire ocean, but parts of the ocean are frozen. Look it up. Gotcha. And I can't believe, by the way, I'm just looking at you in the dark there in your precious <laughs> uh, Jurassic Park hat, Nathan. I just can't believe how long it's been that we've been. It just this brings back a lot of nostalgia, a lot of great memories of old debates. And so and you as well, Snake. But I, I think, Nathan, I'm trying to remember the first time you on you were on. It's been a long time. And so anyway, just a lot of old memories. But Let's see, this one coming in. And oh, wait, that, that reminds me. Now, Word of the Wild, you might have noticed, is new. And we are indeed looking for new people who want to come on to Modern Day Debate. So I do want to mention this. Pardon my doing this during the Q&A, you guys. So sorry. This is such bad form. But since I started, let me finish this. The sign up is in the live chat right now. And if you, similar to Word of the Wild, would like to come on to Modern Day Debate, I highly encourage you. You certainly can. And the link for that, I'm going to throw that in the live chat in two moments. But first, I'm going to read this question. This one coming in from Lyric Edge says, no, no, no. Mike Menzies says, snake, crepuscular rays on a globe? Explain now. Uh, I don't know. You got it. And this question coming in from John Rapp says, I didn't blindly believe anything, quote unquote. Duck, duck, you goose. Nathan, are you an actual fool or just acting foolish? I have a feeling you'd say that <laughs> you're not a fool. But if you want to answer, we'll give you a chance. That's a false dichotomy. 
And we also yep. have, as I mentioned, oh, that link is, I'm throwing that in the live chat. But of course, another question, or you could say comment from your twin brother, Fight the Flat Earth, Nathan, your old buddy, your old rival. It's like <laughs> Peter Pan and Captain Hook, Batman and the Joker, Luke and Darth Vader. Fat, Fight the Flat Earth says R slash whoosh. Next up, Nathan, are you are you are you not gonna greet your friend, Fight the Flat Earth? Next up, I don't like that. Oh, James, James, if if it's okay for me to answer that question, just we just had that I that I uh, said I don't know because I forgot oh, what yeah. the word was, but I just remember. Yeah, so it's it's just uh, the fact that there are obstructions like clouds. It's the rays that go through the clouds um, create angled light. And it's just because there are local obstructions in the atmosphere. You got it. And thank you very much for this question. This one coming in from, you guessed it, your twin brother, Nathan. Alex Stein says, Nathan Ooh. is a beast. I love his debates. Flat Earth for the win. Dude, nice. I'm glad to hear that. I literally just killed a fly real time. Gross. That is epic, Nathan. I appreciate you letting us know that. And this one coming in from a design song one <laughs> says, fine, you don't see a curve from high altitude balloons, but shouldn't we see an ice wall, Nathan? Nathan? While we're waiting for Nathan to answer this question. Uh, there's plenty of pics. There's plenty of pics of the ice wall. You just got to look it up. If you have Google, Google's really helpful. You click on images and then ice wall. You got How it. do you know they're not fake? You don't know they're not fake. You have to go there and take pictures yourself if you really care. But you don't really care, which is why you never prove Earth curve, you never prove Earth rotates, and you never prove anything. All right. Go visit the moon. You got it. And let's see. John Bernard. That was a good one. Fight the Flat Earth is challenging you, John Bernards, to a debate. So, John Bernards, if you want to email me or if you want to put your name into that sign-up sheet link that I put, if you're serious about coming on a debate, I think I remember seeing you earlier saying that you wanted to. And this one coming in from... The Science Ultimatum with Jason Torn says... Thanks for your patience if you're still with us, the science ultimatum. It took a while. It says, question for Nathan. What is the research team you led that you purport is, quote, the latest in the world? Largest. Oh, that, that's what they meant. I think you're right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's gone. It was gone. It's gone. They were asking, though, I... what was the, uh, they said, what is the research team you led? What's like, what was the name of it? Even if it's gone. It's called the official flat earth and globe discussion. You got it. And this last one of the night. Thanks so much for your question. This one coming in from, and then John Bernards, by the way, says he will accept fight the flat earths challenge. So that could be a juicy one, folks. And we are excited. In fact, next Friday, by the way, is going to be a juicy one. Tom Jump taking on Howard George Stirrup. That's going to be an epic one. As we, we want to let you know, folks, we want you to feel welcome as we are a neutral channel. No matter what you, whether you be a flat earther, globe earther, hollow earther, you name it, we are glad you were here and we want to give you a fair shot. This one coming in from Liz says... Nathan, can you please explain the Coriolis effect? Yeah, it's not real. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson says we have a Coriolis and the Earth moves under objects in the air, but we don't observe that in golf tees, balls you throw in the air, insects, birds, drones, helicopters, airplane flights should be drastically different durations, east to west versus west to east. It's not, and I don't know if you guys... I couldn't find a cork opener, so I just samurai sorted the top off of this, and that was that was freaking money, Ooh, dude. Wow, that was Jesus. Nice. that's really special. Thank you, Nathan, and thank you very much for this question coming in yeah. from Mike Menzi. Says without googling snake, how far is the sun and moon from the Earth? The moon is somewhere like two hundred twenty-five thousand miles. Sun's like. Uh, it's in the millions. I don't know. 
You got it. Uh, it's in the millions. You don't know. I'm pretty sure I thought, it's in the I millions. thought we don't understand the model because it's 93 million miles away. During well, I don't, I don't really care how far. Oh, yeah, but then you have million. apogeon and perihelion, yeah. so sometimes it's only 91 million miles away. Yep, it's an ellipse. Yeah, you got. I it. don't really care about the numbers so much as much as uh, the concept of gravity. You got it. And this one coming in. Oh, do want to remind you, folks, Discord. Let's Farm has done a fantastic job of building up the Discord to make it epic. And so I just put that link in the live chat. Highly encourage you. That's also in the description box. Want to encourage you to check out the Modern A Debate Discord as we are excited that the moderators have done a fantastic job. And want to say thank you as well to the moderators here at both YouTube and Twitch, keeping the chat clean so we don't have things like hate speech. Design Song 1 says, wait. There's pictures of the ice wall from high altitude balloons, Nathan question mark back that claim up or give this up for good i don't know why you guys are so worried about an ice wall you should find a curve of the earth because uh, once you realize that that's not there then big deal everyone yeah. agrees that we have all the scientists but, uh. gotcha and that wasn't a question for you taylor nobody cares about your bandwagon policy well, we, we all think that it's, we have done that. So that's all I'm saying. Next up, want to say, we do appreciate you folks. I'm going to be back with a post credit scene, letting you know about upcoming debates. It is going to be amazing. We had last question coming in. It is MC Tune, your father, Nathan. He's in the live chat. He says, Nathan, what is the elevation of the sun and moon over quote unquote flat earth? Provide citations. Falsification is independent of replacement. Clown show. McToon, honestly, one time during the debate says, don't straw man me with eight inches per mile squared. Don't straw man me with eight inches per mile squared. Right. That's we not my formula. We'll about, then emailed we'll me like a week about, later. We are. We'll talk about your guys' personal vendetta later. But... <laughs> I do. All he did is he just asked you a question. He didn't like say you're dumb or anything. He just said, you know, so don't worry. He, you know, he still loves you. It's an old father son, you know, bond folks. They've got an interesting story, but want to let you, they're not really father and son. I made that up, but want to let you know, our guests are linked in the description. I'll be back in a moment with a post credit scene to let you know about epic upcoming debates. Like the one on the bottom right of your screen between T jump and Howard George syrup. So stick around folks. And thanks so much for hanging out with us. Thanks so much. Snake. Word of the Wild, and Nathan Thompson. It's been a true pleasure. Thanks, all. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, Snake. Especially James.